today we're going to cover all of the witchy magical games that are going to be coming to the nintendo switch sometime soon and from the looks of it this is going to be a great year for cozy gamers who love a little bit of magic and the best part about all of these games is despite the fact that they're all to do with witches, wizards and magic, they're all so different from one another. The first game that I am so excited for is Little Witch in the Woods. I first covered this game on my channel I think over half a year ago when I first played the demo because I instantly fell in love with it. It is so, so good and I cannot wait for it to release fully. It is worth noting though, the Nintendo Switch hasn't been 100% confirmed. It's just incredibly likely, but I'm excited nonetheless. In this game, you play as Ellie, an apprentice witch trying to finish her apprenticeship. Although from the very start of the story, things don't go exactly to plan. Daily life with Ellie will see you practicing everything you learn at witch school to help the local people out. And as she does so, she makes friends with all the surrounding villagers. And as you get to know them, you get to listen and hear their stories. Each potion you need to make will require you to run out gather materials that you then need to process yourself into ingredients. Exploring is a huge part of the game and it is so, so fun to do. As your magical skills progress, you'll be able to explore further away from your house and you'll even encounter things that are very reminiscent of the old Zelda dungeons. Not the combat, but more the puzzle solving aspects. There is so much to this game. I love the art style and I am so, so excited for its full release. Another game that we don't know the release date for but we do know it will be coming to the Switch is Tiny Witch. This is specifically for the cozy gamers who have been looking for a store management game. It kind of reminds me of a magical version of Overcooked in the best possible way. Tiny Witch will see you being left in charge of a magic wizard store in a town full of dungeon masters. So it's safe to say you're going to be pretty busy. The idea is the dungeon masters come to your shops to buy minions and it's your job to prep the minions fast enough so the dungeon masters don't attack you yeah they don't make great customers apparently in order to craft the minions you need to create resources by either pounding them or boiling them and then you put them together on your alchemy table to form the minion the money you make from your hard day at work can then be used to purchase new magical machines new resources and different items to improve the store this is the type of cozy game that i have been dying for recently I really want some sort of store management game and this just seems perfect to add to my cozy repertoire. Next is Witchbrook and I don't think I have ever been so excited for a game that I have seen zero gameplay footage of. We have screenshots but so far there hasn't even been a trailer. Now if these screenshots look a little bit familiar this is actually made by the same publishers who made Stardew Valley and although there is no release date and no confirmed release on the Nintendo Switch. Considering Stardew Valley is on every known device possible, including mobile at this point, they literally just released that. I think it's safe to say that we're probably gonna get Witchbrook on a lot of different devices as well. Witchbrook is said to be a beautiful coming of age adventure as you enroll in a local college as a witch in training with the ultimate goal of becoming a resident witch in the town of Mossport. But the thing I'm really looking forward to in this game is the fact that it's basically a witch school life sim. You're in charge of literally everything to do with school life. You have to attend classes, complete assignments, earn badges, and you can even challenge your classmates to a broom race. And if that isn't enough, there's loads to do outside of the school as well. You can make friends with everyone you meet and even romance them. There's also seasonal events and special activities, and you can even take up hobbies like photography and gardening. And of course, you can also customize your character in all of the local shops in the town. Once you've finished your degree, you can then go and do your postgraduate degree, and there's even gameplay after that. So do not worry about the length of this game whatsoever. That's all we know so far. I cannot wait to learn even more, but I am genuinely so looking forward to this game and I cannot wait for it to grace my screen. Next up is Moonstone Island. Now I've already played the demo of this and fell in love. It is so, so good and a magical game in a completely different way 
from the games I've just mentioned. This is kind of a witch life sim mixed with Pokemon, and it is such a cool combination. In this game, you decide to follow your villager's tradition to move to an island in the sky for one year to finish your alchemy training. But don't worry, despite going by yourself, you won't be alone whatsoever, as there's plenty of spirits to not only discover, but also capture. With over a hundred islands to explore, each procedurally generated so no two games are exactly the same, you can make your home on any one of them. And I mean actually make a home. Like the very beginning of the game, you set up a little tent, you can make items to decorate both inside and outside. It's incredible. Each island you visit will have a theme and you'll find spirits matching that theme on each of them. So for example, a water island will host water spirits and an earth island will have earth spirits. But in order to catch the spirits, you must first fight the spirits. It's kind of done similar to Ooblets with a card-like system, but of course they put their own unique twist on the card's mechanic. Each spirit you encounter will have armor, and you have to overcome this before you can really land some real damage. And once you've lowered the health enough, you can try and offer the spirit some homemade food to convince it to join you. But unlike Pokemon, you also need to take care of your spirits. If you feed them and pet them, they'll give you rare resources, and you can use these for both crafting and brewing to help you along on your journey. But this is no simple catching monster style game. Throughout your journey, you'll be facing ancient temples, dungeons and hostile biomes all to uncover the secrets of Moonstone Island. They've already stated at launch there's expected to be over a hundred monsters that you can encounter but there is so much more to the game. Unlike Pokemon this game really leans into the life sim aspects as well so you can also do all the fun life sim things of making friends and even going on dates with the NPCs. As I said earlier, you can make your own house and outside of the house, you can even make your own little farm. And on top of that, you can even go mining as well. There is so much to do in this game and it sounds like the developers are taking on a lot of the feedback of the demo ready for the early access period. So with a few quality of life changes, I think this is going to be a really strong and really fun game. Next, we're going back to school and this is Qatari Academy. Again, we don't have an exact release date. The only thing we can hope for is that it looks half as good on the Nintendo Switch as it does in the trailer. Once again, this is a game focused around you attending school to become a wizard apprentice. But this time you're practicing with a purpose. All the magical skills you're learning in your classes day to day are so that you you can fight a curse that threatens innocent creatures around you. There's a ton of different classes to choose from, some that teach you magical skills, others teach you how to brew potions, you can also learn how to catch spells, and you can even go to botany class to learn how to grow vegetables. The characters you can meet throughout the game look incredible, and you can chat to not only students, but also teachers as well. When you're not in the class, you can get up to whatever you want to do cooking, foraging, bug catching, or even spending time with a cat that is also fully customizable just like your character. And yes, you can pet them as well. This just looks like another fantastic witch life sim. I feel like we've gone ages without a proper witch life sim and now they're all just coming out one after each other. Next is Garden Witch Life. And again, no release date, but this is another witchy farming sim with so much charm and character. After losing your job, you find yourself getting to stay at a vacant witch's house. And that's where you decide you're gonna start your new life. Throughout the game, you'll do things like restoring and rejuvenating the old magic garden. This allows you to grow unique plants for potions, but also make a home for both creatures and spirits. Your days will be filled with cooking, brewing potions, and improving and fixing up the old witch's house. And yes, you can even decorate. You'll also get to explore the island and uncover all of its secrets hidden in ancient texts and hidden passages. As it's a live sim, you'll also be able to befriend the villagers who look absolutely adorable. And there's also festivals and adorable pets to look after. Next up is Sunhaven. 
This is actually in early access right now. So if you cannot wait to play it and have a PC, you can go and purchase it right now on Steam. This magical game is a little bit different from all the previous ones because this one has a medieval theme to it. You can do all of your typical life sim stuff. You can fish, farm, mine, and also be a mage all at the same time. But the thing that gets me really excited and what's really different about this game is how they handle the characters. First of all, you have to pick between seven races when you start off. Human, Demon, Elf, Angel, Elemental, Naga, and Amari. The game itself is quest-based, with each quest you complete giving you XP that allows you to level up your skill tree. The skill tree can help you unlock spells with over a hundred skill tree options that can help with anything from farming to mining and will also help you progress the story. But the really cool thing about the skill tree is it lets you pick how your character deals with certain situations. So for example, you can develop certain spells if you have more of affinity to things like farming, but you can also develop your combat style as well. So if you like to do things like carry swords, you can upgrade your melee abilities so you're stronger with a sword, or you can also choose a non-violent option as well. And the cool thing is they even said for the boss fights, you can even go down the non-violent route as long as you have everything set up to work out for it. I think this is so cool as this means you can play the game multiple times and have multiple different version of events dependent on which skills you pick. And it's made me so excited. I may or may not have already bought it in early access. And finishing off this list is Fey Farm. I won't spend too long on this because I've talked about it in a previous video, but one reason I wanted to mention it is unfortunately we've just got news from the developers saying the game will be delayed. It will still be coming out in 2023, however it looks like it will be closer to the end of the year and not spring like they originally said. This is genuinely one of the games I am most excited for in 2023 and I don't think I'm actually that upset that they want to take longer to perfect it. I would much rather have a fantastic finished game than to get something earlier that isn't quite as good. The cool thing about Fey Farm on being compared to the other magical games is it's actually available to play in co-op with up to three other people. So you can farm and explore with your friends. Also, if you didn't know, Fey Farm is actually a Nintendo Switch exclusive, which means it should, in theory, be really well optimized for the Nintendo Switch and play really nicely. And I'm really glad that it's still coming out in 2023. That's everything from me today, but if you want to see my absolute favorite Nintendo Switch games in 2023, click this video here. I'll see you next time. Bye!